Okay, yes, yes we can. Okay. Um, we, uh, Gordana and I have uh, five minutes each, which is, whereas the other two speakers had 10 minutes. So uh, I'm going to have to go very quickly so I so that we both get our time in. So let's start. Oh. Sorry. Yes. There we go. Um, journalist Gordon Campbell wrote recently in an article on plastic pollution that compared to COVID and climate change, the threat from plastic seems like a low rent version of planetary disaster. Is it possible that the plastic drink bottle, the fast food plastic knife and fork, the plastic packaging wrapped around virtually everything we consume are really omens of the apocalypse? The answer, unfortunately, is yes. The effects of plastic pollution on the Earth's oceans are well documented, potentially catastrophic and increasing exponentially year on year. UN estimates suggest that over 75% of all the plastic produced since 1950 is now waste, with the majority of it discarded into landfills or dumped into marine environments. The UN Environment Programme has conservatively estimated that each year more than 8 million tonnes of plastic ends up in the oceans. That's roughly 15 tonnes of plastic entering our oceans every minute. 80% of all the litter in our oceans is now made of plastic. And by 2050, the World Wildlife Fund estimates that by 2050, sorry, without action, the World Wildlife Fund estimates that by 2050, there'll be more plastic in the sea, in the sea than fish by weight. Only 9% of plastic waste is recycled. It is difficult to recycle, slow to decay, expensive and polluting to burn, and breaks down into microplastics. Tiny particles that enter the food chain and cause harm to animals and potentially humans. We've all seen the images of fish and seabirds choking on plastic, but that unfortunately is just the tip of the iceberg. Microplastics, which are particles smaller than 4.75 millimeters in diameter, are present in the clothes we wear, the water we drink, and throughout the food chain. There are an estimated 14 million tons of them residing on the sea floor. And because fossil fuels are heavily used to create plastics and transport them to their point of sale, the climate change implications of the plastics problem are also not insignificant. This is an intolerable problem that needs immediate and far-reaching action to remedy. The Mac and the Plastic Working Group, uh, a combined initiative of the FIG Young Surveyors Network and Commission 4, uh, was formed in, in, in 2018 uh, to contribute to the battle against plastic waste. The question, of course, is how we as surveyors and spatial science professionals can best con contribute to the global battle against plastic pollution. Given our specific remote sensing, hydrographic surveying, project management and overall measurement skill sets, measurement science skill sets. We have focused our efforts on better understanding the quality and type of plastic waste being transported in waterways before they reach our oceans. Rivers have been identified as a significant contributor to the plastic pollution problem affecting our oceans with plastic waste predominantly concentrated on the surface and upper limits of water bodies, on riverbanks and along coastlines during the transportation process. This slide from CSIRO in Australia illustrates the waste transportation pathway and it's from research undertaken in the Bay of Bengal at the outfall of the Meghna, Brahmaputra and Ganges river systems. Effectively, it's all coming from uplands and flows down through the waterways into the estuaries and the coastal areas and then out into the coastal areas, and then from there it, it moves out to the to the ocean. So, so that's effectively the the problem. Currently, most of the available plastic waste data is obtained from empirical probability estimates at large scale, or from beach litter surveys, discrete areas of interest. Most beach litter surveys are undertaken in relation to a transect line, or chain and offset. For the surveyors among you, using international beach survey classification standards, which attempt to ensure consistent quantification 
and characterizations of the litter found. These types of surveys are time consuming, labor intensive and confined to small areas. A slide from our friends in, uh, at Green Hub in Vietnam illustrates the, the traditional beach survey process. However, it is worthwhile noting that differences in the international beach survey classification standards and the fact that the accuracy of the survey data is dependent upon the skill of the observer makes the integration and comparison of beach survey data difficult. Remote sensing data combined with artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence algorithms and GIS tools has the potential to overcome current plastic mapping limitations and provide a long-term and resource efficient solution to the mapping and monitoring of plastic waste. However, there are significant gaps, or there were significant gaps, and it's not now, uh, in our understanding of the spectral signatures of floating plastic, representing a major challenge to the use of remote sensing techniques. Although UAV orthophotos can provide suitably accurate data for mapping of floating plastic, most techniques rely on visual interpretation and manual laboring. So in considering these limitations, we wondered whether deep learning algorithms could be the solution to extracting floating plastic data from UAV orthophotos, enabling the differentiation of plastic type and determining the relationship between spatial resolution and detectable plastic size. Our research has found that the answer is yes. We have successfully developed a method to detect, extract and classify floating and land-based plastic as small as one, uh, one centimeter squared from UAV orthophotos using deep learning algorithms. Well, Dana will now share with us how we do it. So I'll stop. Thank you, Simon. As Simon said, I will try to briefly explain the solution that we came up with uh, in order to deal with, with this problem. Uh, taking into account the minimum size of the plastic debris that Simon presented on his slide, uh, through traditional beach survey methodology, the ultra-high resolution images is needed. In the recent year, UAV platforms, in combination with the structure from motion algorithm, have been recognized as a cost-effective alternative for the acquisition of geospatial data with high uh, spatial resolution. Although technology development enabled the fast and effective acquisition of the large amount of the geospatial data, the processing and interpretation of those data are still challenging and uh, automatization of processing procedure is needed. Recently, artificial intelligence has been uh, widely used for these purposes. Uh, segment, semantic segmentation of floating plastic pieces from water bodies with ultra high resolution remote sensing images was based on the, uh, is based on the convolutional narrow, neural network that provided state of the art accuracy. So we used them in this approach. We used end to end semantic segmentation model based on UNET architecture, which has the ability to work with very little training data and provide precise segmentation. Uh, UNET has symmetrical encoder decoder architectures, as you can see on the slide. The encoder side uh, effectively uh, extracts the uh, pixel information within while decoder aim to extract the plastic from the future map. For the encoder side, uh, in this study, we used ResNet 50 architecture, which, which was providing the higher accuracy among tested. So the aim of our research is to fulfill need for efficient and rapid estimation of plastic pollution by developing the methodology for automatic plastic detection. The overall model for detection of the plastic debris is in near real time is presented on the slide, and it's completely based on previously discussed technologies. The model uses different uh, sensors, such as board view images with a spatial resolution of 30 centimeters, RGB and multispectral UAV data, and in situ plastic data. To gain deeper insight in the possibility of the mapping plastic uh, using the proposed approach, we conduct several surveys in the different scenarios, including clear um, deep water lake, unpolluted one with the artificial target, as you can see on the slide. And the second one is a real case scenario, uh, which represents confluence of two river system, which is unfortunate, unfortunately uh, polluted. 
Totally seven survey, UAV survey was conducted using UAV equipped with the LGP and multispectral camera. And the high, uh, flight height was from uh, 12 to 19 meters, while visual resolution of the created data was between 4 and 30 millimeters. Totally three uh, different algorithms uh, was trained. Uh, first one is the model for detection of the floating materials on the water surfaces based on board view images. Uh, second one is the model for detection of the plastic uh, pieces. Uh, and the third one is for classification of the plastic debris type. Um, on the uh, left side, you can uh, see the results of the detection of the floating debris based on board view two images. Uh, as you can see, algorithm is uh, capable to accurately detect floating debris, but due to uh, pixel size, uh, we need uh, more detailed uh, images or a higher resolution to the to deeper for deeper understand. The basic principle, basic aim of this uh, algorithm is to provide us uh, ability to detect hotspots. Uh, after that, we then uh, examine the relationship between image spatial resolution and the size of the detect detected plastic. The result shows that the algorithm needs at least one pure pixel uh, for detecting plastic on the water surface and at least two plastic, uh, plastic pixels to detect uh, the debris uh, underwater. Uh, the visual inspection of the result shows that the location of the plastic pieces were accurately detected, but some plastic pieces on the border were misclassified as the surrounding class. But no difference was observed between performance of the model between grouped or the single plastic and also uh, algorithm accurately detect the plastic in the shallow waters. Um, so uh, this is closer uh, look. Uh, we use uh, this one is was based on the auto photo with uh, spatial resolution of three centimeters, but we use one centimeter auto photo uh, to classify uh, different types of the plastic. The results are presented on the slide. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the algorithm is capable to identify and quantify plastic objects with high precision, including four major classes, uh, plastic bags, plastic bottles, food containers, and food wrapping. Uh, in order to sum up, uh, the main benefits of our model is the rapid creation of accurate maps of the plastic. Uh, the processing of UAV data is 